What's up, Barty Littles? Cannibal here, and Trials of Osiris has finally been announced to return to Destiny 2 on March 13th. Now, we haven't had real Trials of Osiris since the end of Destiny 1. That Trials of the Ninth stuff, pretty much different. It's basically comp. So I figured I'd make a video giving you guys some basic tips on helping you guys go flawless for the first time reaching that lighthouse and getting your brand new nostalgia gear and those sweet doctrine of passings if they're a thing. Back in the day you only had to win technically seven games because the boons gave you a free, I think it was a free win automatically and then a free win if you won your first game and then you had a mulligan which was extremely nice for carries. A lot of times people would forget to buy their boons so tip number one not really. Don't forget to buy your boons because your team will hate you. If there is boons. I don't know if they will include that. So let's get into the tips. Now these are 12 fairly basic tips, but these are very textbook. People don't follow them. And, you know, you lose rounds because of simple things like this. When If you would have won that round, you could have won that game. So tip number one. I made a video back in the day, you know, four or five years ago. And I'll link it down below. It's, it's It was kind of like a funny video, but... It's still true. Tip number one is don't die. The absolute worst thing you can do for your team is to die. If you go down, you you know, there's no response. You have to be revived by your teammate. You're just putting extra pressure on your team. If you die, your teammate has to kind of push around to try and potentially revive your orb, or it's a 2v3 situation. So don't peek snipe lanes if you don't have a sniper and, you know, try and put two hand cannon shots into a sniper who's 40 meters away and you're going to be doing 30 damage a headshot. It's not worth it. You're, if you get, if he happens to get a lucky snipe on you, you're going to just put so much more pressure on your team. So tip number one, don't die. Tip number two, sniping. If you can snipe in this game mode and you're good at sniping, you have absolutely zero problems going flawless. Sniping in this game, in general, is is the best thing to be good at. You can one shot anybody from any range technically. You're able to complete. You're able to do one v threes a lot easier than you would with a shotgun. So if you're able to pick up a sniper, then do it. If not. Let someone else in your team you be the sniper, and you can probably run three snipers in your team, but it might not be a smart idea if the enemy team has a it shotgun, like two shotgunners, because like if you have three snipers in your team and they realize that, they're probably going to be extra aggressive and push you and take advantage of you not having a shotgun. I think the number one sniper in Trials is going to be Revoker, because you miss a shot, you get a shot back. Revoker, honestly, is my favorite sniper. I've made videos about it. Back in the day, people always thought it was such a bad gun, and I, I praised it. I said it was the best sniper in the game when it first came out, and people said it was, you know, crappy, not worth it, but, you know, people using it now. After Revoker, probably Beloved, and then you might see your six shooters like Twilight and stuff like that, but I'm not going to get into that. So tip number three, we're going to go with defending down enemy ghosts, or orbs is I think what we call them. So, say you're sniping on your team, and you get a pick. It's on, it's 2v3. You're going to want to, you know, be, be a bit more aggressive, push, and defend that downed enemy ghost, right? Push in together as a team, look for the next guy, try and pick him off, again, push forward again as a team, defend the second guy's orb while keeping track of the first guy's orb, and you're just fighting one guy. You should be able to cut him off, not let him get to his enemy teammates, collapse on him pretty easy. If he gets a revive, you guys played that absolutely terrible because it's 3v1 and you should not allow him to get to enemy ghosts that is just bad another thing to add about this there's gonna be a lot of people doing carries in this playlist single or double carries pay attention on the team if you can recognize names or how people are playing if you snipe the better player if you snipe the person who's doing the carry definitely you can be more aggressive because you know the other player who's the carry probably not gonna be that good and is gonna be Easy prey. So pay attention to who you down. If you down their good, if you down their good player, their carrier, you can push in extra aggressive because you know that other player is not going to be the greatest challenge. Tip number four: sniping enemy ghosts. This will be a quick one, but there's a certain timing when you're sniping an enemy ghost who is about to be revived. Right when they're revived, you don't just shoot them in the face right away. It's, there's a certain timing, and if you play Destiny One, you have the timing. It's kind of when they're standing up is when you want to shoot. And I'll show you an example in the video. Tip number five. Kind of mentioned it a little bit. 
but you want to push as a team. There's absolutely no reason to, you know, kind of solo push a player. There's no reason to. If you if you see your team going to the, you know, top side of a map, don't flank all the way down on the bottom. You know, it might work depending on people you play with. If it doesn't work one round, don't try and do it again another round because you're gonna want to stay in your team because if you go down again, you're putting a lot of pressure on your team. We're going to tip number six. It's kind of like. As I said before, don't solo push. So don't don't solo push away from your team in the beginning of your rounds. You you can for a little bit, see how the enemy plays, but if it doesn't work for you, you know, change it up. If you if three of you alive, you snipe one guy, don't solo push those last two guys. There's absolutely no reason to. You know, you can try and play the hero and push them one v two or push them, maybe get a one v one. But why risk it? You have an advantage of three people against two. You don't have to push and try and get a 1v1. Even if you do get a 1v1, that's cool. But you're just taking unnecessary risks. Push as a team. Don't solo push. Now, because that's exactly what the enemy wants. In a 1v3, an enemy wants you to push alone. If you solo push an enemy, that's exactly what he wants and exactly is what is best for him in order to try and beat you guys in a 1v3. And you'd be able to tell if a team is playing by the book if you're the last one alive and they ain't pushing you. Which will bring me into my next tip, play the timer. I believe this is tip number seven, play the timer. If there's three of you alive, one of them alive, again, no need to push. Play the timer. There will be a capture point that spawns once the timer ends that if you capture, you win the round. I was playing Elim with some of my sore boys. We noticed there was no timer once it went overtime, so it was just either capture the point or die. I don't know if that's how it's going to be in trials. I assume it might be, but... Again, if there's three of you alive and only one of them alive, you know you know the player is pretty good and you don't want to push. Play the timer, play the capture point, force him to come to you. He'll be in the line of sight of all three of you. Easy kill. Tip number eight, I think. This is one of the most important tips there is, and that is get revives. Revives are absolutely vital in this game type. There's no reason to run by your teammates or to try and finish off you know an enemy. Because most likely, if you don't already get the kill, he's probably going to get away. Take every opportunity you can to get a revive, because that's an extra body in the field. If there's, a, if you're in a 1v1, and you're able to get a revive, get the revive. I mean, sure, it might be cool to get the win the 1v1, but if it's a close game, some good enemies, it's already 3-3, you know, you want to play it safe. If it's a little higher, you know, 4-0, sure, play the 1v1. Revives are super important. I'll try and show you an example of a part, you know, where a revive could have won the game. And I was going to turn this into another tip, but I'll just include it in this. In Destiny 1, I, I hope it's different in Trials for Destiny 2, but in Destiny 1, I hope it's the same, I mean. In Destiny 1, when you would revive a teammate and you were taking damage, it didn't matter. It didn't stop the timer. You could revive a teammate no matter what, taking damage. Destiny 2, if you're reviving while taking damage, it kind of cancels it. It kind of like staggers it. So I hope it's like original Destiny 1. If it is, here's a couple tips for that. If you're Titan, you can barricade an orb to revive them. Anything else though, I highly suggest key binding a separate function for your revive. I say this in a lot of videos. I use my left alt as well as F to interact oh, and revive. The reason for that is my left alt is super easy to hit with my left thumb, and I can have my fingers on WASD and just naturally move, aim, and shoot. Whereas if I have it on F, it's, it's unnatural for me. I have to use my index to take off the D to move. I can't strafe right. I can only go forward, backwards, and left. I might accidentally go off the orb and get lose the revive. So you always want to try and key on something to help you get a revive. I suggest left alt. Again, Xbox, console, whatever, I suggest an aftermarket controller, your choice, and having a paddle in the back for X to help you revive. It's, it's huge. Or learn claw, but you know you probably have 15 years of controller, don't want to claw. I'm not gonna get into it, but yeah. Getting revives is super important. Now, tip number nine, which is just as important as tip number eight, getting revives, it's protect your revives. Do not revive somebody around a corner and leave them. If you revive somebody from your safety of around a corner and you just leave them, don't do anything, they're going to get sniped. You're going to farm them. You're going to give the team an extra kill. You're going to give your teammate an extra death. He's going to be mad at you for ruining his KD. And not only that, you're going to increase this timer for the next potential possible revive. So always protect your teammates. Now, the number one thing people do to protect their teammates 
is they would slide into them. Once you revive them, they would slide into them, give them a push to kind of mess up their aim. People do this on console more so because, you know, the aim assist, potentially. People told me that they would run across and just drag the sniper's aim. When I played console, I never did that. I never did a push. I never ran across and dragged aim because when I was the one in the scope, it never affected me. Someone running across my scope didn't drag my reticule enough to screw me up. Someone pushing them didn't do enough to screw me up. You can still do it. If it works for you, it works for you. But what I recommend to do is when you're reviving your teammate from safety or just whatever, right as you revive them, slide out and counter snipe the enemy or shoot at the enemy. Because that enemy is going to be 99% concentrated on that easy snipe revive and he's not going to be aiming at you to snipe you. So usually you can counter snipe him. And that's what I recommend to do is counter snipe them. Not only do you get a revive, you also get a down enemy. Tip number 10, you can use your super to get revives. If it's a 1v1, 1v2, even possibly a 1v3, and you have kind of enemy orbs nearby, if you pop your super, you don't have to kill the whole team. You don't have to kill two people. You can kill one person and then revive your teammates because, you know, that's that's honestly going to be better. If A lot of times if you pop your super, people just, they just completely forget about orbs and they run. A good team, you know, they'll probably try and fight you, snipe you, and stuff like that. But majority of the time, I guarantee it, people will run. And they will leave your revives open. So in Destiny 1, you didn't damage didn't stop your revives, right? So you have reduced damage as a super. You can literally sit there and revive a teammate while getting shot at by two, three people. And then you, you, know, you push them. Throw a hammer at them. Throw a dawn blade at them. Whatever it was in Destiny 1. Push them with a hammer. Stuff like that. In Destiny 2... As I said, you take damage, it will reduce your revive, stagger your revive, but I don't know if trials will be the same. But, and I'm not sure if this works, but I'm pretty sure it will. You can use, say, Sentinel Shield or the Reflective Arc Strider. I think if you are blocking while reviving, since you're not taking damage, it won't stagger your super, and you can revive your teammate while in your super getting shot at. After you revive one teammate, you push forward with your super, push them away, that teammate you revived, potentially goes for your other teammate and you're all alive you probably killed one person and then you turn it around into a 2v3 tip number 11 don't waste your super in a 1v3 if it's a 1v3 the enemy team has your teammates orbs and you can't really get a revive and the game is still fairly early maybe 2-2 two, 3-2 two, two, you probably want to save your super you probably lost that round because if you lose you go into the next round without a super the odds are against you popping your super in a 1v3 trying to you know, kill an enemy team when they have your and your teammates orbs. Don't waste your super in a 1v3. Try and be smart with it and either just go die, make a play without it, jump off the map. Think about the timer. Think about how many rounds. Of course, if there's the last round, use your super. But just think about those things. If you have maybe Sentinel Bubble, you can probably pop it on the control point if you can bring the time down. But most of the times, be smart the super and save it. And that brings me to my last tip. Just play smart. If you're losing a lane constantly, you know, three rounds with a sniper, don't keep pushing that lane. Push another lane. Revive your teammates. Protect your teammates. Don't pop your super at a 1v3. Pay attention to how many rounds are left. Pay attention to what enemy supers are on the field. If they have no supers and if you have a super, you can push and get an easy round win. Don't rush in a 3v1. Play it safe. And these are all really super textbook trials tips that will help you guys go flawless. If you have a friend that's kind of struggling and needs some help with this, send him this video. Some of these tips should help him throughout trials. So I hope these tips help you guys out. I hope you guys are able to go flawless when trials comes out. And if not, I hope these tips help you go flawless. And I believe that's it for me, Bardians. Until next time, stay thick.